The way we drive vehicles is changing and changing at a rapid rate, by the way, for over a century. We have driven cars fueled by petrol or diesel. But now, as the prices surge, their supply peak and uh, uh, with the decline in its production, inevitable electric vehicles and hydrogen vehicles are increasingly becoming a new reality, a reality that even the world's biggest automobiles. 50 years ago, hydrogen-powered cars were seen as the next big thing. People thought, soon I'll drive this car. Even governments and companies spend billions of dollars on this project. But fast forward to today, and while electric cars have taken over, hydrogen-powered cars are still fighting to make their mark. High costs, limited infrastructure, or production challenges. What's really stopping hydrogen cars from taking off? Stick with me to find out if hydrogen-powered vehicles are the future, or if they'll just remain a headline in the news. But first, let's go back in time to where it all started. In the 1860s, a Belgian inventor, Etienne Lenoir, built a car he called the Hippomobile. It was the first time someone used hydrogen fuel for transportation. While others had tried before, Lenoir was the first to make it work. But unfortunately, you won't find it parked in anyone's garage today because it didn't become a hit back then. But Lenoir's work showed that hydrogen could be used in a new way, and it was the first step towards cleaner fuels for vehicles. So long after it, in the 1970s, the world again started paying attention to hydrogen. This time, it was because of growing concerns about the environment. People were looking for cleaner energy sources, and hydrogen seemed like a great way. Governments and scientists began thinking, why not choose hydrogen to fuel our cars? Even in the 1980s, the military got involved testing hydrogen-powered vehicles for their own use. Automakers also began experimenting with hydrogen technology, hoping it could one day be part of the future of transportation. Everyone was too serious. However, this world is so unpredictable. Once the thing caught everyone's attention, now suddenly fading. And the main reason was electric cars. Because in the 1990s, everyone was talking about eclectic cars. These cars are environmentally friendly and also don't use natural resources. So everyone thinking, it's best. But things started to change again in 2008 when the Japanese government began pushing for cleaner technology. This gave hydrogen a fresh boost. That time, Honda and Toyota thought, hey, let's make some hydrogen cars. And soon, Honda introduced its first hydrogen car, FCX Clarity. It could travel 366 miles on a full tank but was only available in Japan and California. When Honda updated it in 2017, the range stayed the same, but it was still only offered in California. In 2015, Toyota also launched the Mirai, a hydrogen-powered car. At first, Mirai could go 300 miles on a tank. But amazingly, by 2021, they updated the Mirai that could travel up to 400 miles per tank. It's priced just under $50,000 and offers better range and power. These cars are trying to make hydrogen technology more accessible to everyday drivers. But the problem is, how do we make hydrogen work on a mass scale? Today, companies like General Motors, Hyundai, and yes, even Ferrari are still putting a lot of money into hydrogen. They're all curious about what hydrogen can do. But hydrogen, unlike electricity, isn't easy to produce, store, or distribute. It requires a lot of investment and infrastructure, and that's a great challenge for the future. General Motors has committed $35 billion to hydrogen fuel cell development, EVs, and autonomous driving through 2025. Honda also has contributed $85 million in a joint investment with GM by building a fuel cell development facility in Michigan. Later this year, Honda is bringing out its hydrogen-powered CRVEFCEV in California. They plan to sell about 300 of these SUVs each year and even cover up to $15,000 in refueling costs to attract buyers. But despite all this investment, still consumer-facing hydrogen vehicles remain limited, and people are confused about whom to blame. Chris Martin, Group Lead of Technical, Safety and Regulatory PR at Honda, says, Our primary activity in hydrogen, frankly, is not FCEV right now. Instead, they're working on building up the whole hydrogen economy. 
they think FCEVs will be important for personal transportation in the future. But first, they need to create the right infrastructure to support everyday drivers. For now, Honda is starting with commercial vehicles. They've just introduced a hydrogen-powered Class 8 semi-truck that can drive up to 400 miles on a single tank. And this is just the beginning, because Honda hopes to produce more hydrogen-powered trucks. Also, industries that use a lot of diesel have goals to cut emissions, and hydrogen could be the answer they need. Once hydrogen is more common in these industries, Honda believes it will eventually become available to regular consumers. We still have a long way to go before hydrogen is a practical option for everyone. One major challenge is how we produce hydrogen. Right now, making hydrogen isn't very clean. As of 2021, over half of hydrogen in the U.S. came from natural gas and coal, which aren't environmentally friendly. And this is also a big hurdle why we're not watching hydrogen cars on the roads. But there's hope. If we could use excess energy from solar and wind, we might be able to produce clean hydrogen. The National Renewable Energy Lab even shows that we can make up to 1 billion metric tons of hydrogen a year with renewable energy. But this kind of clean hydrogen production is still several years away. Also, there is a problem with the prices. And you won't believe, hydrogen prices went through the roof earlier this year, hitting a whopping 36 hours per kilogram. That means if you're filling a Toyota Mirai, which guzzles about 5.6 kilograms of hydrogen, you'd be looking at a bill of over $200. Sure, you can drive about 402 miles on that, but that's like paying 50 cents for every single mile. And when you compare it with those trusty hybrid cars like the Toyota Prius, they're a bit easier on the pocket, costing you somewhere between 15 and 18 cents per mile. But if you're using a Tesla Model 3, it is even cheaper, clocking in at around 10 cents per mile. So, yeah, hydrogen is the option, but it's definitely not winning any awards for affordability right now. Maybe you're thinking, we're so advanced, so why not use other methods? Yes, some methods are available, but they're even more costly. Producing hydrogen through electrolysis, where water is split into hydrogen and oxygen, requires a great amount of energy, with around 60% of that energy being lost during the process. This makes it inefficient and keeps the cost of hydrogen high compared to fossil fuels and renewable electricity. On top of that, building hydrogen stations is expensive, with each one in California costing at least $6.5 million. In contrast, EV charging stations cost just $110,000 each. Currently, there are only 53 hydrogen stations in the U.S., 52 in California, and one in Hawaii. Even with these few stations, only 3,000 hydrogen cars were sold in the U.S. in 2023. And safety is also the biggest problem that complicates the situation. Hydrogen is highly flammable and requires special safety measures. No doubt, Honda's fourth-generation fuel cell vehicles come with some pretty impressive safety upgrades. They've got strong, corrosion-resistant tanks and are built with precise manufacturing techniques. But the real test is making sure these safety features actually hold up when you're out on the road. And the most dangerous thing is, when hydrogen is released into the atmosphere, it can actually add to climate change in an indirect way. It doesn't directly trap heat like carbon dioxide, but it increases the levels of other greenhouse gases like methane, ozone, and water vapor. This leads to extra warming of the planet. So, even though hydrogen is clean when used, we still need to be careful about how we handle and manage it to avoid these indirect effects on the environment. We've talked about the challenges, but yeah, we can't ignore the benefits. First up, refueling a hydrogen car takes only about five minutes, similar to filling up at a gas station, while electric cars can take much longer to charge. Plus, hydrogen cars emit only water vapor, which is great for the environment, and they generally handle extreme weather better than battery-powered vehicles. An amazing thing is, the government is backing hydrogen technology with a lot of investments. In March 2024, the Department of Energy put $750 million into 52 hydrogen projects through the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. This funding aims to improve how hydrogen is produced, lower its costs, and support its use in various applications, from everyday cars to heavy-duty trucks and cargo ships. And also, hydrogen fuel cells are a really clean and efficient way to produce energy. The only byproducts are heat and water, so there's no pollution at all. Unlike biofuels or hydropower, which need a lot of land, 
hydrogen doesn't take up much space to produce. NASA is even using hydrogen in space missions, where the water it creates is actually used as drinking water for astronauts. It's a non-toxic and much safer alternative compared to things like coal, natural gas, or nuclear power. NASA has become an expert in safely handling hydrogen, whether it's storing it, transporting it, or using it for rocket fuel. Now, as NASA prepares for future missions to the Moon and Mars, hydrogen's role is expanding. Instead of just being used for rockets, it could be extracted from water or soil on other planets. This hydrogen could power vehicles, provide electricity, and even create oxygen for astronauts to breathe, helping reduce the need to send supplies from Earth. NASA is also developing new types of fuel cells that run on hydrogen. These fuel cells could become small, reliable power sources for future spacecraft or even space habitats. So, what's next for hydrogen cars? The journey to making hydrogen an option for cars is still underway, and there are hurdles to overcome, like high production costs, limited refueling infrastructure, and safety concerns. But history shows that technology can change quickly. Look at how electric vehicles went from niche to mainstream in just over a decade. If we invest in hydrogen with the same passion as we have for electric vehicles, hydrogen cars can become common on our roads within the next few years. I hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.